And then we are ready for our next presentation, which will come from BioInvent International and CEO Martin Benshoff. Welcome, Martin, and please go ahead. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Happy to be here. So this is our forward-looking statement. As you know, we are listed on the Stockholm Stock Exchange, and I would like to start with a quick snapshot of the company. Uh, so we are a company focused on innovative immuno-oncology therapies uh, with different uh, mode of actions. We are pushing ahead with a portfolio. So we have currently four clinical programs ongoing, and by the end of the year, we will have a fifth program. We are a very integrated company, so we have a, a research engine, um, which comprises functional screening, and I will come back to that later in a minute. Uh, but also we have under one roof uh, GMP manufacturing, which is a, a competitive advantage. The technology has now been validated through a number of collaborations. Um, you know, a couple of companies are listed here. Most recently, we did a collaboration with Pfizer, who picked uh, targets and antibodies that we have selected with our platform. But also in the past, we did antibody discovery collaborations with uh, Daiichi, Bayer, and Mitsubishi Tanabe. We're very proud about our strong institutional shareholder base. Um, so uh, we have, as listed here, Red Mile, Van Herk Investments, one of the long-standing loyal supporters, Omega, HBM, AP4, uh, Merieux, Svetbank, Robur, Inbus, and uh, Handelsbanken. We have a very solid cash position, so currently we have a runway until the end of 2024. And as I already mentioned, we're listed actually since 20 years on the NASDAQ OMX in Stockholm. So just very briefly to recap what has happened during 2021, uh, was actually quite active uh, year. So we have uh, uh, done a couple of clinical and preclinical milestones. Um, we started very early during Q1 this year, presenting our data for our lead compound, uh, BR1206, where we saw first signs of efficacy. But then we also pushed aggressively ahead with our portfolio strategy. So we have started enrolling patients for our second and third compound, uh, BI1808 is the second one, and the third one is a collaboration that we have with Transgene uh, BT001. And both uh, studies are recruiting very well. Uh, we also had a very important uh, preclinical milestone, uh, so we uh, have shown proof of concept data on our second anti fc gamma R2B uh, program 1607 at the uh, AACR uh, this year. And then, of course, last but not least, we did a very successful financing during Q1, uh, during which we raised uh, close to 160 million US. Going forward uh, for the rest of the year, so at the end of the year, we're planning to update the, the market on uh, BI1206 in both studies, in, in the non oxygen lymphoma study as well as in the solid cancer study. Um, and then, of course, another important milestone, as I already mentioned earlier, is our um, fifth program that will initiate clinical development by the end of the year, which is BI-1607. And there we plan to submit the clinical trial application by the end of the year. And as I already mentioned, I think earlier, uh, we have a very strong focus on um, potential additional partnerships and milestones from uh, collaborations that are already ongoing. So very briefly on our uh, technology platform. Uh, so at the core, at the heart of the company, you have something which is called FIRST, which is really, as mentioned here, phenotypic discovery screening for new oncology targets and antibodies. And I will just focus on the unique features. So first of all, we are always starting from fresh human uh, tumor tissue or, or patient material. And for that, we have established a very uh, close collaboration with the local hospitals in Lund such that we receive this material on a regular basis. And then once we have it, uh, we do screening against our high quality encoder antibody library and select specific antibodies uh, against the cells of interest. And then before we really find out what those antibodies are binding uh, to, we go through a number of uh, animal models. So do a phenotypic screening and focus only on those antibodies who have shown strong therapeutic effects in a number of animal models. So that's the platform that, for instance, Pfizer has used to pick targets and antibodies of interest. And that's the platform that we have used to build um, our portfolio, which is summarized on the next slide. And before I go into further detail regarding the various programs, I'll just give you a quick summary and overview uh, about the portfolio. And basically, we're focusing in, uh, onto two different categories. One is around the target FC Gamma R2B. 
which is a very interesting uh, receptor on the cells of the innate immune system. Uh, but we also have quite some focus on T regulatory cells from the tumor microenvironment, and there we're focusing specifically on two targets. Uh, one is CTLA4 and the other one is TNF receptor 2. BI1206, which is our lead program, has been already partnered uh, with uh, CASI Pharmaceuticals for China, Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. And that program is currently, or this antibody is currently in two different clinical development programs, one in combination with rituximab for non nutrient lymphoma, and then the other one for uh, solid cancer in combination with pembrolizumab. And I will go into details a little bit later. And then we have a second antibody called BI1607, uh, and that antibody is scheduled for the clinical trial application at the end of the year, and that will be our fifth uh, clinical um, development program. Then very briefly, the second category where we focus on targets on the T-regulatory cells from the tumor microenvironment. So there we have uh, two targets. So the first one is CTLA-4, and there we have a collaboration with a company called Transgene, and there we combine our proprietary anti-CTLA-4 with their oncolytic virus platform. And this program has started recruiting by the uh, beginning of the year and is recruiting very nicely. And then, as you can see down here, we're focusing on a target called TNF receptor 2, and this is one of the hot and upcoming uh, IO targets. And there we have two different antibodies. Uh, the lead is uh, BI1808, and that program has also been started and is recruiting very nicely. And then we have a second program called BI1910, uh, and this is still in preclinical development. I should also mention that we have two uh, clinical supply and collaboration agreements with Merck. One around uh, BI1206 in solid tumors in combination with pembrolizumab, obviously. And then we just recently signed a second contract for BI1808 where we do single agent as well as combination with uh, pembrolizumab. Now we'll tell you a little bit more in detail about the uh, different programs. So starting with our most advanced program, which is BI1206, uh, which is in non-Hodgkin lymphoma in combination with uh, rituximab. And there we presented actually uh, first signs of efficacy at the beginning of this year, that was during Q1. And there we had uh, 15 patients enrolled. Out of those 15 patients, nine patients could be evaluated for response. And out of those nine patients, we had two complete responses and four partial responses, which is a very good overall response rate, even though it's still early days. And more important, actually, that the complete responses have long durations, so it's a very high quality complete response. So in one case, it was more than one year, and in the other case, more than two years. So very encouraging uh, first signs of uh, efficacy. Uh, a little bit more detail on the indications that we're currently focusing on. So we're not focusing on all the non-Hodgkin lymphoma um, uh, at the beginning. So working on follicular lymphoma, uh, marginal zone lymphoma, and mantle cell lymphoma. And you see on this side the uh, value driver. So we have a very compelling scientific rationale in anti-CD20 refractory um, B-cell lymphoma patients. We are positioning this as a chemo-free regimen uh, since we have a favorable safety profile. And there's really a high unmet medical need uh, for patients in uh, second and third line. Also to mention that we have often drug designation for mantle cell lymphoma, which we uh, got in uh, 2019. On the next slide, uh, very briefly, the study design. Uh, so as I mentioned, we are focusing on patients uh, who have relapsed or refractory and do not react anymore towards, uh, um, yeah, towards uh, anti uh, CD20 antibodies, in this case, rituximab. We are currently still in the uh, dose escalation, so part eight, but we are um, at the end of it. So we're moving soon into dose expansion. And uh, basically, there are three work streams that we're currently focusing on, which are summarized on the next slide. So number one, we are really trying to select the uh, dose for part two. And then we're preparing uh, quite heavily uh, end of phase one meeting with the FDA that we want to have uh, as soon as possible. And then uh, we're working very diligently with our partner in China, Kasi Pharmaceuticals, who are planning to uh, um, get an IND approved for China at the end of this year. Coming to the second study uh, of BI1206, and this time it's focusing on solid cancer. So we are uh, focusing on patients uh, with solid tumors who have relapsed or refractory against anti-PD-1 or, or anti-PD-L1. We are still in dose escalation, we are recruiting, 
And as I already mentioned earlier, so we are basically uh, partnering there with Merck, which is a clinical supply and collaboration agreement and uh, will also provide an update towards the end of this year about the st status of this study. So this slide gives a nice summary about the uh, potentially broad application uh, for uh, 1206. So we're currently focusing in indonate non-Hodgkin lymphoma and then in the solid cancer study on metastatic uh, melanoma as well as non-small cell lung cancer. If data allow and, and support, we can branch out into uh, a broader non-Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, but also other solid tumors. And I think what I also would like to mention at this stage is that um, there's also application potential in autoimmune diseases that we're not ex exploring ourselves, but through collaborations with uh, different academic groups in order to establish in vitro proof of concept. Switching gears now, so going from uh, anti oxygamma to B antibodies uh, to um, anti CTLA4 and anti TNF receptor 2 antibodies, which are expressed on T regulatory cells of the tumor microenvironment. And I will start talking about our collaboration uh, with Transgene, uh, which is around uh, the compound BT001. So BT001 is basically our proprietary anti-CTLA4 antibody, which is nicely differentiated from the one which is currently used uh, in the clinic, epilimumab. And this uh, antibody genes we have cloned into the oncolytic uh, virus of transgene, such that when we uh, transfect uh, solid tumor cells, that uh, when the virus is replicating, uh, the virus is lysing the cells at the same time point, also producing anti-CTLA4 at high concentrations. And what we achieve through that is that we have a very high uh, concentration of anti-CTLA4 in the solid tumor environment and a very low systemic um, exposure to the antibody, which of course is uh, very important for the safety profile. This uh, study has been started um, at the beginning of this year and is recruiting very well. And uh, hopefully we can provide uh, some updates around this study soon. Coming then to our TNF receptor 2 antibodies, and just to reiterate, TNF receptor 2 is one of the very interesting targets, uh, probably a new immune oncology target, um, and um, we are at the forefront. So we are the company who is most advanced uh, with a program against TNF receptor 2, uh, since we're already in the clinic. And uh, around that program, we established our second clinical trial and collaboration agreement with Merck. Uh, since we are not only testing BR1808 as a single agent, as I will show you on the next slide, but also in combination with uh, Ketruda. So this study is running very well. We have uh, a very strong rationale uh, for single agent as well as a combination therapy. And uh, we got an NDA approved by the FDA in April 2021. Just very briefly on the uh, clinical study design. Uh, so as I already mentioned, we have two arms. So one single agent that has been already started. And then we also will explore combination with uh, Ketruda, uh, Pembrolizumab. The single agent uh, trial is well on its way. So that was initiated by the uh, beginning of the year. Recruiting very well, uh, very nice progression. And uh, we are focusing there on three different indications. First, uh, non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, but also ovarian cancer, and there's actually uh, quite some interesting background um, to that. So when we did the screening on tumor tissue from patients, we worked a lot with ovarian cancer material, where we could see that uh, TNF receptor 2 was highly upregulated on the T regulatory cells in the uh, tumor microenvironment. And then we have a third indication. This is CTCL, which is a rare T cell lymphoma, and that could provide a potentially a shortcut to market. So in case we have strong data there, we could go there for conditional approval because as for ovarian cancer, also for CTCL, there's a very high unmet medical need. Then a little bit later, we will start with the uh, second arm where we combine uh, 1808 uh, with Ketruda. And that will be focusing on non-small cell lung cancer and ovarian cancer. The single arm is already recruiting very well. And as I said, for BT001, we also hope to have an update around that study in the near future. At the end, I would like to come back to the news flow for uh, the uh, rest of this year, 2021. So as I mentioned, so we'll provide an update around uh, BI-1206, which is our lead compound 
for the non-Hodgkin lymphoma study as well as for the solid cancer study. Uh, then, of course, a very important milestone is that we push ahead uh, with our portfolio. That means our fifth program will initiate clinical development, which is BR1607, our second FCGAM R2B antibody. And then uh, we remain very uh, active regarding uh, business development. Thank you very much for your attention. And thank you for the presentation. Um, first of all, I would like to ask you what you would say is your biggest advantage if you compare to your competitors. Yeah, there are actually a couple of advantages. So first of all, I mentioned already at the beginning the high level of integration. So in our company, we really have uh, not only discovery, but also preclinical development, clinical development and manufacturing. And that's a very strong competitive advantage because um, of timelines, basically. Um, so when I started at BioInvent, we had one program in the clinic that was um, August 2018. And now by the end of this year, we'll have five programs in the clinic. And you can do only this when, once you have this level of integration. The second thing, which goes, of course, uh, hand in hand, is the uh, science that we do. Uh, so we have a very strong immunologist team uh, that can really work and, and, and find new mode of actions. And then uh, thirdly, as I explained uh, briefly, the uh, discovery tool that we have first, which is a phenotypic function screening tool. Uh, that is also, I think, the way we use it, uh, unique for BioInvent. And you mentioned here the, the fifth, um, fifth asset that you're about to enter a clinical uh, study with. How will you keep the speed and the focus up in, in all your projects? Well, obviously we have, with the most recent fin financing, we have grown the company. So uh, a couple of months ago, we just had a, a core team in clinical development. Now we have a, a real team. So with, uh, you know, clinical operations, regulatory, but also PKPD and of course, uh, program managers, et cetera, et cetera. So I think each program gets uh, a proper resource so that we can really execute and, and make sure that we keep our timelines. And that's actually the, the main thing. So really have the right resources in, in, in play. And I think the shareholders that we got on board uh, during Q1 this year, they, already w w uh, they also want us to build uh, uh, a diversified uh, portfolio. And finally, we'll end on a very general question. W what is your strategy? How would you describe it regarding your clinical assets? Yeah, so at the moment, I think our sweet spot is really to find new um, treatment modalities, new mode of actions. So that's, I, th I think, we're very, really good. And then translating this uh, quickly into the clinic. So our current strategy is really afterwards, once we have shown proof of concept in the clinic, to find partners. Uh, and we have done so already for our lead asset with Casi Pharmaceuticals. So, you know, typically maybe we would start with a geography-focused partnership, keeping the rest of the world either for ourselves or for, for uh, bigger partners to come. And then eventually at some time point, so we have two indications, uh, one for BR1206 in uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, where we could go for conditional approval. We could probably do the same for BR1808 uh, in CTCL. Uh, but that has, remains to be seen. That's, of course, data dependent. And in case we should see strong data there, then we also have the possibility to integrate us uh, further forward um, uh, along the process and, and value chain. But currently, it's a, a strong focus on partnering. But thank you so much for coming, and thank you for the, the answers. Thank you, Cecilia.